Okay, this time I'm going to review uh, hypothesis testing, the concept of hypothesis testing. Okay, suppose we have a new medicine. We believe that the medicine has a positive effect on people in a population. And uh, we're going to test this uh, even though we can uh, test the entire population. So instead we're going to uh, test uh, on a sample from people, sample of people. Uh, from, from the population. Let's see the population and population mean and standard deviation of IQ among adults or okay, mu of 100, IQ 100, and uh, uh, sigma standard deviation, population standard deviation of 15. Okay, and IQ is normally distributed in the population. A researcher believes that the, the, he has created a medicine that has a positive effect on the population mean IQ. And specifically, uh, the researcher believes that if he gave the entire population of adults the medicine, the new population mean IQ would be greater than 100 and the standard deviation would still be 15. What I don't really get is the assuming the standard deviation is going to be the same. I'm pretty sure it's going to be different, but uh, I uh, interpret that as the dip difference is uh, very insignificant. Okay, so this is what, uh, if I use a diagram, it's like this. Population and the mu of, po population mean of IQ is mu of 100 and standard deviation of 15. And we give medicine and we believe, we, we suppose that the population mean after the medicine, medication would be uh, over 100 and standard deviations will be the same. Uh, okay, unfortunately though the researcher cannot give the medicine to all adults so we can never know the mu med, you know, the pop IQ, you know, population mean of IQ after medication, mu med, you know, we can never know this. So he can, however, uh, take a random sample of adults and give them the medicine and measure their IQs and calculate the sample mean IQ. That, they can do it. He could then use uh, sample mean IQ, you know, mean, mean med. So the researcher takes a random sample of 100 adults and gives them the medicine. After administering the medicine, he finds that mean IQ in a sample mean med to be 105. Okay, Based on our sample mean, it appears that the medicine might work in population but we don't know for sure. So we took the sample of 100 and uh, we did the uh, you know mean calculation on a sample and the sample mean after medication was 105. So that's what it means. So you know it, it appears that the medicine might have worked in a population, but we don't know for sure. What do you mean by that? It is, you know, this difference of positive five points. That could be the result of sampling error. You know, it could be a within a margin of error, you know, because we have errors in sampling error, you know, what, what we call sampling error. So it could be the 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 margin of sampling error. If that's the case, then you know we can say that um, that medicine didn't do anything. It was just sampling error. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay. So now this is what we know. This is the population, and we, when we take sample one hundred. The sample mean was 105, and uh, this is the population size. Okay, this is what we know for for now. So uh, here, the only thing the researcher cares about is whether or not there's a positive effect in the population. It's not interested in uh, determining there's negative effect or not. He's probably positive that that there's some positive effect, and you know. There's no chance that there's no ne any negative effect. Sometimes there might be a case like that. So he has a directional hypothesis. You know, this is actually called one-tailed test. Okay. 
So there are two possibilities of interest. The medicine has no positive positive effect in the population, or the medicine has a hypothesized positive effect in the population. You know, in this scenario, okay, from this sample, we can hypothesize two things. There was no effect after all; it was just air. Or we can say, the p another possibility is there was a, you know. And hypothesize positive effect. This was actually the positive effect. That's what what's what it's talking about. So, if I use a notation, a mathematical notation, it's like mu med is equal to 100 or below 100, and uh, sigma med is 15. It's the same. And the same one, you know, positive hypothesis, positive effect scenario would be a mu med is greater than 100 and uh, mu, mu uh, sigma med is 15 okay we don't know which is true but we, we would like to know which is true that's what what it is you know no effect or a positive effect all right so let's start off by assuming that the medicine has no positive effect in population why do you do that you know if there's no positive effect you know this five point difference is gonna be so insignificant. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay. So let's suppose uh, medicine had no positive effect in population. If that's the case, mu med could be as high as one hundred, but no greater than one hundred. So let's start assuming the mu med one hundred and uh, you know sigma med fifteen. Don't worry about this too much though. So. Let's suppose no difference. In other words, this was still 100. Okay. Population uh, mean. Suppose population means 100. You know, it's supposed to be 105, uh, 100. You know, close to 100 because this is uh, you know mu med is. If mu med is 100, this sample med med you know sample mean med. Uh, mean men it's supposed to be you know really close to 100 but if it's not so close to 100 then it kind of go against this assumption that the mu med is still the same as you know mu orig original part uh, mean so that's what I'm trying to say so if this is too much increase then Assuming uh, mu med is still 100, it's not gonna stand. It's not gonna hold. That's why you know. That's the logic behind it. Suppose you know the population mean didn't change at all. Okay, so the sample. The the mean IQ I got from the sample 105. You know, is it like uh, likely? Is it? likely to happen is it likely to happen could it, you know is it within our, our variability range you know if it's within the variability range of this population then it means that yeah yeah there was probably no change okay because this is, you know if it's the uh, in a population mean after medication the sample mean after medication should be around 100 within uh, you know plus minus you know some sampling error you know but is it really within sampling error okay let's, let's try to calculate it okay to do that what we're trying to do is uh you know 105 you know it's probability of 105 you're getting 105 out of that uh, population that's why trying to calculate okay again what one what, what we're trying to do is probability of getting 105 f from this population so in other words we're doing the z-score on uh, some some you know some uh, sam sampling distributions S so uh, you know it's 105 minus 100 over you know standard deviation of the sample which is you know standard deviation divided by the square root of population in other words, this. Okay, this is the 
standard standard deviation is sample, right? 15 is a population of standard deviation. If you want to get the sampling of standard deviation of the sample distribution, all you have to do is divide it, divide it by the square root of the sample sample size. Okay, so that's that. And point three three. Okay, z equal uh, z score of three point three three is okay, this right? Okay. If I look at the negative number uh, here, point oh 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 four. So the possibility that uh, you know you get one oh five. It's like. Or, or, or higher is only like 0 0.0004 you know probability which is extremely low okay it's right here so almost there's no way you get this you know this was the actual sample calculation this is the actual number we got from the sample and this is just a assumption our assumption so our assumption you know based on uh, what we calculated from 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 the sample you know this is the physical evidence you know based on this this assumption is highly unlikely you know because you know you don't get this you know you can sometimes get it you know by chance but most of the time you don't get this number IQ 105 from this sample you know when you when you sample 100 not just one if you just sample one there's a chance that you happen to chose you know what some, someone higher than 100 but you picked 100 sample of 100 people IQs then you got 105 this chance it's extremely rare if in a population we sampled from was this so kind of implying that you know this population uh, mean after medication was probably higher to get this number so this is probably not true that's what what, what, it, what we can you know kind of kind of guess from this based on the, the, the you know, sample statistics. The interpretation is, if the medicine has no effect in the population, mu med equals 100 and uh, sigma med equals 15. You know, if that's uh, the assumption, the probability that I would draw a sample size of 100 with a sample mean as high as 105 is only 0 0.0004. That's what I just said, you know. So this is so unlikely that I'm going to reject. I'm mean, going to reject the idea that the medicine has no positive effect in the population. That's what I just said, you know, earlier too. There's no effect, you know. This is actually called null hypothesis. This is a typical uh, statistical uh, procedure, you know. We have no 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 hypothesis, and uh, you know we assume there's no effect, and uh, we either uh, prove it or disapprove it. You know, decide you know accepting or not rejecting or not rejecting. You know, so that's what we do. Another issue here is we got this probability of zero point zero 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 four, and I say, well, it's so rare. So you know, it cannot be from that population. That's what I said, but it's obviously really low. But what's the borderline? You know, how low is really low, and uh, how low is not low? You know, you know, we kind of tend to wanna say, you know, 0 0.05. Let's use 0 0.05 in education research and social science research, and that's a proven number that tend to hold true with many situations.